what's good people it's your boy mr rome cowboys fan talk right back like i never left what's up with y'all man as you can see not in my car in the work vehicle had to um travel out of state coming back from tennessee rather um but you know cowboys news must be talked about I was going to get to y'all yesterday, but like it's hard to sometimes create content while you're traveling, even though I always try to get y'all something. I wanted to just jump in here and talk about what's been going on with the team. Um, I know yesterday y'all probably wanted my thoughts on Sam Williams, etc. So I apologize for being late, but we're here now. Let's get to it. Um, first and foremost, Sam Williams things. Sam's Sam Williams things sucks. Mainly because of this. You know, it's not that... I don't feel like the Sam Williams thing is going to derail the season. I don't think he's going to get suspended that long. I think the max he can get is two games or something like that. But it sucks because we almost got through the whole offseason in the quiet offseason. We did. And this is the noise that most teams deal with. Um, not just Dallas. A lot, of, a lot of media wants you to think it's just Dallas. Hold on the camera a little crooked. Um, no, it's not just Dallas. Everyone deals with a little bit of off-season noise. We, if, if this is the main thing we're going to deal with, I think we did pretty good. I've had Dallas off-seasons where it's been a lot worse. So I will deal with it. Um, it's, it's, it's another lesson in maturity for Sam Williams. Um, you're a cowboy. This ain't like other teams, other cities. The microscope is on you. They can't wait to get a negative story on you. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can probably get away from these things and not to deal with it. But, um... Yeah, man, it is what it is. Everybody relax. Sam ain't getting cut. The stuff I've seen on Twitter, Twitter is a cesspool of corniness. I swear. Sam Williams not getting cut. Um, you heard the owner. They ain't tripping. They probably reprimanded him behind the scenes. This might affect his money down the line, so get it together, Sam, if you want to get paid. All right. Um, I also wanted to move on to some things that I heard from my boy, Boss Cowboy. Shout out to Boss. I appreciate him and the content he's been putting out because... I'm not there, so I only can go off what I hear and read and whatever I can dig up. Um, so him, Law Nation, um, Vodge Sky, um, all the other reporters, John Machota, Michael Gelkin, um, CJ Walker, Kyle Humans, like everybody I can dig some information from, I've been trying to, you know, um, and I know you guys have that same option, but I'm just giving my opinion on it. And Boss was talking about the old line, which is super important this year. Um, he gave some great nuggets. He said the old line looks phenomenal, the starting old line, um, and that's from his video he dropped earlier. Go tap into Boss Cowboy Sports. Um, he was just doing a recap on practice from last night, and he was saying that you know him and Sky observed that the offensive line looks phenomenal, the starting offensive line. Now that's that's not speaking to the rest of the old line if someone else needs to get in but he did get these two nuggets it's great to see that some of our youth that we drafted is getting some playing time i know matt walesco got such a horrible shoulder issue that i don't know if he's ever gonna be able to come to fruition like we want him to and it just is what it is i'm out on josh ball i know some people have been saying he's playing decent i don't care i don't care he's gonna have to play great for like 12 games straight starting for me to come back around to josh ball I'm out on that. Um, you know, Udoga's been hurt. So it was kind of scary. The other day I was literally saying, I just want some offensive line depth, somebody that's been, that has some, some skins on the wall, pause. But a seen Richards working at tackle shows that he must have shown something, at least right now. If they, 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 they signed somebody, maybe I'm wrong. Right now that the team feels comfortable with not moving Tyler Smith back out to tackle if Tyron got nicked up because first team reps, the second team, like the swing tackle has been Asim Richards and TJ Bass has been working in where Zach Martin would be. I don't know if that's a detrimental thing to Matt Farnock, what, Far Farniak, who I think is going to be the direct um, replacement for Tyler Beatish. God forbid if anybody goes down. Um, but I'm getting a little bit more confidence in our young guys, basically. I'm excited because I, I trust the gentlemen that have been putting out, like the, the guys I spoke of, Skywalker, um, Boss Cowboy, I trust their eyes. I trust what they say. They're not going to say it if they don't believe it. So, you know what I'm saying? When you put trust in your, your I guess I can say our my colleague, 
you know, um, although I'm not a reporter, I just, you know what I'm saying, that gives me confidence. So I'm going to roll with the confidence until otherwise. Um, you guys should be excited too. I, I already believe in our starting offensive line. I've been saying this starting O-line, the, 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 the best five. I've been saying this best five since like, what, February or something like that? March? Because I always believed in Tyron Smith coming back and doing his thing. I don't think Tyron going to get nicked up this year, but you're going to have to call me super homer guy. And I'm cool with that. <laughs> I am cool with that. It was good to see, like I said the other day, um, there's not a lot of practice details coming out. I think those that's going, that's pretty much over with. Um, getting exactly what happened at practice because we get ready for the game. We, we about what, 16 days out or something like that. So this is almost like the two week period for a bye week to a game. So you're not gonna get a lot of practice details on what's going on in practice anymore. You're just gonna get quotes, and that's fine. I don't want them to tell me too much so that they can get a um, the other team get an advantage. Because look, I told you the other day we got lock in on the Giants. The Giants just picked up Isaiah Simmons today. They are at least trying to improve. Isaiah Simmons is at least athletically a great player. I don't think he's been able to put it together mentally completely because if he could have, then Arizona's not trading him for a seventh round pick. They traded him because he's a, even though he's an athletic freak, something ain't right. You don't trade nobody from a seventh pick unless you're stupid like the Cowboys, unless something not right. So as good as a pickup that is, he gonna have to show me because I ain't seen it. The Cardinals ain't seen it, or they wouldn't have traded him. Um, but speaking of Arizona, like I mean, speaking of um, New York, although they just picked up Isaiah Simmons from Arizona, the Cowboys just have too much more going on. Like I know people don't want to believe it, but our team we really did stock up this year. Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, Will McClay, whoever you want to attribute it to, we got a lot better in a lot of different places. We're short up on the D-line. Whether you want to hate on Mozzie Smith or not, he's a young, aggressive, physical, violent D-tackle to go with our starter D-tackle and Jonathan Hankins, Oso Digizua, et cetera, right? We added Stephon Gilmore, right? Instead of Anthony Brown, that's, a, that's an OD exponential jump up. Instead of Noah Brown and James Washington, who never got on the field, we got Brandon Cooks, healthy Michael Gallup, healthy Michael Gallup. Like, let's not downplay that. And we got Jalen Tobert, who's playing so confident that even Michael Gallup got to at least look over his shoulder and say, I see you, young boy. I see you. I got to play harder to make sure I get on the field. Brandon Cooks looks rejuvenated, excited. You can tell just by like the blue and white scrimmage and some of the stuff. You've seen him with the visor. Visor Brandon Cooks is crazy. He looked locked in. You know what I'm saying? Part of the beeping in the work truck. But um, I'm excited about the offense and everything like that. And they talked to Dak. John Machota talked to Dak Prescott. Um, he left some quotes out. First of all, Dak was talking about Deuce Vaughn and just saying that. I just feel like this. Before I say this. I feel like the league is going to sleep on Deuce until it's too late. And then in about three or four weeks into the season, they're going to be talking about how Dallas got the, one of the steals in the draft. Maybe not the steal. I know everybody loves to say that, but one of the steals. Because Deuce Vaughn is going to be a problem. Dak was saying not only is he a, he's not a gadget guy. He's not a scat back. He's not a just throw the ball to him in space or in space guy. He's a running back with a unique skill set because of his size, his shiftiness, provides a mismatch. People look at it and vice versa, he's so small. That's a mismatch for defenders. You a 6'3 defender trying to get down to his level, he can change direction just faster than you can pause, bend down. It's different. And he said he's a between the tackles runner. He's been getting a lot of first team reps that's confirmed by people that are there. That makes me excited because I didn't know if they were gonna work him in. And I'm feeling way more comfortable about our running back room, depth and order. Deuce might not be right behind Rico Dowdle might be running back two, but I don't know how long that's going to be in place. I feel like Deuce is running back two, and Dowdle should be three, but we will see. That's just my thoughts. I'm not a coach on his dad. Um, Dak also talked about, and I'm sorry to be long-winded. I didn't talk to y'all yesterday. Dak also talked about the standard of Dallas, and the standard is winning. The standard is to win. And that's not just because, you know, cockiness and nothing like that. That's just, that's set forth when you call yourself America's team, 
when everybody acknowledges you as America's team, the standards ain't the same. I call Dak the most hated player in the league because for him to be such a great guy, such a great leader, such a great ambassador for the game, the fans and the media say nothing but 95, to, I feel like 95, 99% negative stuff about him. If he was so loved and respected, you would get more respect for Dak. Shout out to Greg Olson too for just laying it out recently, saying you know Dak is unfairly and disrespectfully scrutinized on a regular basis, because that's real. But the standard is to win. He says the guys in the locker room know what the standard is, and they locked in. Every time I hear quotes about this team, I hear Dak saying the standard is to win. Micah saying he can't, like he's locked in on winning. Jerron Curse, Demarcus Lawrence, everyone is locked in. I feel like there's a new level of focus to this team than regular years, and we're going to see it soon. We're gonna we're gonna send a message to the league versus the Giants. The Giants are seemingly for some reason getting so much love and credit. They're ranked like a little bit above the Cowboys, and I can't wait. I cannot wait for that game for the sort of league to see just how good this defense is, just how locked in our coaching staff is, and how good this offense can be. Because the Giants have a good defense. They just added Isaiah Simmons. So when we go through and slaughter them, the excuses better be minimal. This is your boy, Mr. Rome, man. I'm sure I missed something. Let me know if I missed something you wanted me to talk about. Like I said, I'm driving. I got another five hours to get back to my crib. So I'm going to try to lock in and get my eyes back on the road. I love y'all. I miss y'all. I'll be back in the studio soon. I holler.